Greetings, friends. Greetings. In the domain of Gethal Glaherg, all are welcome. It is a fine day for living. And any day worth living is a day worth racing, eh? But while in my domain, why not stop and visit Gethal's all-you-can-eat steakhouse, just off Route 6 on Rego 12. Welcome to Classic Game Room, where I've got a mid-90s PlayStation game that boasts, among other things, on the back of the packaging, over 50 minutes of cinematic animations, which will make you think you're watching TV. If only TV was this good. Starwinder. So far, he has fared well against aliens who may be unfamiliar with how he thinks. That is about to change. His next race is against fellow humanoid Deanna Stone. But this may be an advantage for Rhodes as well, unless the stories we've heard are true, and Earthmen really have little or no understanding of their planet's women. Leave it to the alien man speaking English to tell me what I already know. This is Starwinder from 1996 for the PlayStation from Mindscape. Love that name. Sounds like a G.I. Joe bad guy. I've been captured by Mindscape and forced to play computer games. Don't bother rescuing me, I'm, I'm doing fine. Anyway, if you've been watching Classic Game Room for a while, you've no doubt heard me talk about games that are not the greatest games ever made, but have so much personality that they're immensely likable. And that describes Starwinder. Because unlike most modern games where cutscenes ruin the game, in Starwinder, cutscenes make the game. And of course, one of those favorites is five-time champion Gothol Glaherg of Regor 12. Gothol, of course, has been off the circuit for over two years pursuing an acting career. Starwinder has you racing on future space rails or something. It makes absolutely no sense, and they try to back it up with a ridiculous plot, which is so absurd that it's awesome. It sounds like a Star Trek The Next Generation episode, but sillier. 117 million years ago, something went to work in the galaxy. Something began building the rails. Thousands of miles long, each is as different as the civilization for which it seems to have been built. Their purpose is unclear. They look like space intestines, so naturally we're going to race on them. After some awesome cutscenes. But now they seem anxious to put him in his place. And probably no one would be happier to do just that than the Naotian from Zeta Pupus 111, Dextor the Terrible. Viewers will recall that Dextor won the championship last year following a bizarre incident in which the other contestants became ill at a pre-race buffet. A buffet catered by Dextor. So, assuming you're not poisoned by aliens, you'll be spending a lot of time in Starwinder racing through these things. The Space Rails, the last of which is orbiting a dying star. Adrift and orbiting a dying star, it contained no gem with which to complete the star sphere. You know what they say, an incomplete star sphere is nothing more than a fancy paperweight, so you may as well complete it by winning races in this kind of bizarre future race game. You just go flat out and try to stay as close to the actual surface of the rails as possible because you're like a future space trolley. If you fly off the rails, you're pretty much screwed, but you're also screwed if you stay on them because nobody cleans these things and they're filled with debris that you'll constantly run into. Oh yeah, and the other pilots are shooting at you. Fortunately, you can shoot back at them, and the entire game has this ambitious, cheesy, mid-90s quality to it, like, Hey, we can do this now! It's technically possible, so let's just do it even though we're not quite sure how. But surely you must be disappointed- You either learn to take these things in stride, or you let them eat you up. Losing any one individual race is, is meaningless! Well, thanks, Goax! Whoa, whoa! Back on the rails, back on the rails, and... Ah! Somebody clean these damn things! And check this out, Starwinder gives you puzzles to solve during the loading screens. That's like a game within a game.
I'll warn you, though, Starwinder starts off deceptively easy, and it's easy to not take this game seriously because of its great sense of humor, but at some point it just kicks your ass. Because even if you memorize the rails upon which you're going to race, that won't save you from crashing into meteors and space debris and rocks constantly, which slows you down and doesn't seem to affect your better alien or robot opponents. And the track designs just get insane after a while, but I've got to give this game a lot of credit. For a mid-90s release on the PlayStation, it runs smoothly, it plays well, and the writing is brilliant. His victory was celebrated on his homeworld of Naos with three days of heavy sarcasm. Good luck, Mr. Rhodes. Yes! <laughs> get ready to rumble on the rails with Starwinder, the ultimate space race. Sent to the show by my main man, Ben from Buffalo, New York, who's sent so many cool, quirky games worth a look like this one, Starwinder. The glory is not in the finishing, but in the doing, Barlow. That's very inspiring. And next time, I'm going to blow the doors off that Earthman if it's the last thing I do. But if you'll excuse me, I'm throwing a post-race party.